The theory that I'm using for my clinical question is Roy's adaptation model that we looked at a few modules ago. So Roy's adaptation model is a grand range theory, um, which means it's a little more abstract than the mid-range theories, um, and it also focuses on phenomena of concepts, such as persons as adaptive systems, like Roy's does. Um, according to Roy 1997, the purpose of this theory is to ensure adaptation in our patients and in people in general. Um, so by increasing adaptation in people during their different like health complications um, or other outside complications that they have going on, it can help people improve the interaction between their environment and themselves, which overall improves their health and quality of life at the end of the day. So I know we looked at it before, but I'll go over a few different concepts of Roy's theory. Um, so according to Roy and Senesac 2021, Roy's model includes four main concepts, um, people as adaptive systems, the environment, health, and the goal of nursing. So people as adaptive systems is broken down into four different adaptive modes. So that is the physical mode, such as the body's basic needs like oxygen, nutrition, rest, um, self-concept mode, which is the beliefs and feelings a person has about themselves. So their body image, their coping, their spiritual growth, etc. cetera. Um, role function mode, which is um, one in relation to others what is their role an individual has in society um, so that looks at like how an individual fulfills those roles and how they change roles um, and then the last is the interdependence mode which is the interaction an individual has um, related to others um, and kind of those needs such as love communication respect and relationships um, the other aspect that we looked at, one of the concepts was the environment, and this is the different conditions, circumstances, and influences that surround an individu individual um, and, and influences their behavior. Health was another concept that we looked at, um, which is just an interaction of personal and environmental interactions, um, their state of being, becoming whole. Um, that kind of reflects the individual. individual. Um, and then last concept of Roy's model is the goal of nursing, um, and that's the promotion of adaptation for individuals, um, contributing to their health and quality of life and dignity. So there are different relationships of these concepts in the model. So I have linked the concept map below this video from Jennings 2017, and this is a visual that shows the interaction. Um, but overall, there is a stimuli, such as an illness or a major change in a person's life, and this stimuli affects the individual's coping process. And in that coping process is an overlap of those modes of adaptation that we talked about previously, the um, physical mode, self-concept, interdependence, and role function. And so the um, interrelation of those different modes um, come together to create that coping process, which ultimately affects an individual's behavioral outcome to that stimuli. And again, that um, concept map is linked below this video. And lastly, for Roy's theory, um, there are some different assumptions that Roy had about this theory in general. Um, so according to Roy 1997, there are philosophical assumptions, scientific assumptions, and cultural assumptions about um, her theory. The philosophical assumptions talks about how humans have mutual relationships with the world and God figures, um, and how God is revealed in the diversity of creation, um, and just that very spiritual aspect um, of people and their interactions. And then the scientific assumptions kind of talks about um, individuals thinking and feeling and meaning, and that helps them integrate 
with themselves in the environment. And then lastly, cultural assumptions um, just kind of describes how different experiences that individuals have can influence how those different concepts of the model are expressed. Um, so now we will go on to critique Roy's model. Um, and the following critique of Roy's model is based on the analysis and critique structure by Chin and Kramer 2018. So first we talk about clarity of the model. Roy's adaptation model is, it's more of an abstract theory, um, as we talked about that grand theory that it is, but it is clear and organized. The concepts are well defined, there's the four adaptive modes again that we talked about, physical, self-concept, role function and interdependence, and then there's also the other concept of people as adaptive systems, environment, health, and goal of nursing. And all of those concepts were well defined. I went through the definitions um, earlier in this video. And if those are new terms for people, or unfamiliar terms, I guess, in terms of understanding, Roy did define those for what she meant by all of those. Um, and there does not show to be any conflict necessarily between those concepts and their definitions. The next analysis that we do is the simplicity of the model. So how many like different relationships and concepts are in this theory? Um, so again, to reiterate, we have those four basic concepts, people as adaptive systems, environment, health, and the goal of nursing. And then people as adaptive systems has four um, sub-concepts, those four different modes that we talked about. And those relationships are all well organized together. Um, as we kind of saw in the concept map, um, you can see how the modes interrelate and work together and how the four modes are underneath that umbrella branch as people as adaptive systems. And there is, I believe, enough of these concepts to cover everything that would need for this theory to be successful. And I don't think there's anything more needed um, concept-wise for this theory. I think, um, as we can see, all the concepts interact and influence one another to promote adaptation um, for the overall health and wellness of individuals. The next we talk about is generality of the theory. I think this theory is overall fairly general as it can be applied to a broad spectrum of situations. I think this theory can be applied to any situation in which there is a stimuli that requires an individual to adapt and cope. So whether that be in a healthcare setting or even just in a life setting, any type of change or occurrence or stimuli that comes in this theory can be applied to. I think this theory also can apply to all populations and ages. Um, it also includes the individual as well as their relationships and the environment. So it is pretty general when it comes to population and setting. Then the setting, like I said, we can use it in healthcare as nurses, but it can also be applied in many different areas. Um, so I don't think it's super specific. I think we can apply it across the board. However, since the theory is so general and a little abstract, it doesn't provide universal outcomes um, for it being used across the board. So this theory and its outcomes will be different for each individual in each circumstance it's used in, um, just because you're looking at so many different aspects of an individual and those aspects are going to be unique for each individual person. Next, we look at accessibility. Um, are the concepts measurable? The theory gave well-defined definitions for each of the concepts, um, such as um, self-concept includes body image, spiritual growth, self-respect, etc. However, it doesn't provide necessarily specifics on how to measure each of those concepts. I think overall the theory allows a nurse or a provider to 
examine coping and adaptation process and the behavioral outcome, but it doesn't give specifics for how to measure each one of those concepts of the theory. Lastly, we look at the importance of this model, um, looking at is this model relevant to nursing practice specifically? I think absolutely yes, this model is very clinically significant. Um, it can be used with a large variety of patients. Um, it can help nurses assess a variety of different areas of the patient's life. Um, it allows the nurse to help patients grow and adapt, um, leading to overall better health and wellness and quality of life. So I think it can be used in many areas of healthcare, um, as well as with many different patients in healthcare. I think this theory also has the potential to guide and change nursing practice in the future. These concepts can be used for future research to guide and change nursing practice, such as how we interact with patients, how we assess patients, how we help patients adapt, um, and more. I think this can be applied in many different areas of research in many different settings. And then, is this theory likely to be relevant as practice changes in the future? This theory has been around for a while, and I think it's likely to still be relevant in the future, um, in the near and distant future. I think regardless of how practice changes, patients will always require coping and adaptation to different stimuli that happen in their lives, and we still have many aspects of life that interact to affect the overall quality of life. So I think regardless of how healthcare and nursing practices changes, patients are always going to have those concepts that nurses need to look at. So I think this theory will definitely still be relevant over time. After the critique, I kind of look at my specific clinical question in relation to this model. Um, so my clinical question is, why do some pediatric oncology patients display psychosocial issues? I think this theory is relevant and appropriate for this clinical question because being diagnosed with cancer as a child is a major stimuli in a child's life that can bring about many life changes, positive or negative, but mostly negative, and can very much affect coping and adapting for a a child. So this theory is appropriate because it examines how nurses can help children adapt and cope with their diagnoses to help all those different modes that a child has to their life. Looking at each one of those individually to see how we can support a child's growth and adaptation during that time. So this theory will assist me with this patient population because it will give me different assessment tools, such as examining the child as an adaptive system, looking at their specific adaptive needs, their environment, their health, and overall helping them adapt as that goal of nursing in order to best meet that child's needs and encourage their coping process and bring about those positive behavioral changes and positive coping related to their diagnosis. So this theory will be appropriate for this population um, and will overall help the health and quality of life in kids with cancer.